Okay, our course space has been finished, and so you see I have the tab open here. Uh, so we'll click to that. So this is the space that got made. Right? So we have courses A and A, PSU, EDU, and then we have R20. And so some of what it did then uh, in setting itself up, it goes and look at modules here. It turns on a whole bunch of modules uh, because it knows it needs these, right? So there's 130 here. Um, what it does to get LTI to work is it actually sets up LTI initially. And so what it does is after it is created, let's go back here. Refresh this. There we go. Okay. So we've got this section. The other thing it does, in addition to the section, so that's where uh, Drupal can query this and say, hey, what should I pull in? Um, is it makes a service instance. So there's actually a record of the relationship between ART20 being made on the course instructional flow service. Uh, one neat little thing this does, you see there's a run cron button here. Typically, I mean, now I can run cron on an admin, whatever. Um, but typically you need a cron key, is what it's called. It's just a big hash number to be able to run the cron without being there. Uh, so very basic use case is after it's created itself, the ART20 site runs its own cron and then reports back to the CIS what the cron key was. It also has a generic service data field um, in which it can pull you know, really whatever information that we deem necessary for that service. Um, in the case of the MOOC, which is what the distribution is being used, for a MOOC it'll actually send back uh, what content outlines it has. This way you could have different instructors uh, teaching the course slightly different ways, but generally speaking the course space is bound by the same rules. Something else it does is uh, inside, so this is the R20 site, um, and I haven't done anything other than you know, click and run that script. It actually asks the CIS what its LTI tool provider is. Um, and so this gets a little crazy, but <laughs> you can actually have an LTI request go to, uh, if we pull up the visual here, you can have an LTI request go from your LMS to the CIS, which is what this online site is, and then the CIS will interpret it and re-sign the request against the courses site. And so what this allows you to do is, yes, you could just go directly from the LMS to the courses space, but I don't, in that scenario, someone would actually have to set it up. And what I'm trying to get to is a point at which I don't need to know anything about the setup to have secure transactions going. Right, so what re-signing the LTI request looks like is, say a student is in the LMS and they click the link. It'll do the launch, saying they're a student, to the CIS. And it'll say, do I have this section? Yes, cool. Re-signs the request and sends it over here. So it's on demand creating a secure channel between these two points. Why this is important is uh, we're trying to set this up very, very generically. So it works for any college. And so you'll see the way it got that information is actually in the CIS. I can go and we've showed this, oops, it's, it's, it's here, showed this approach before, but similar to the way you can query other entity types, uh, I can query this as well. So uh, this is all staging information and clearly not what things will be at the end. So I'm not that concerned about showing it in a, in a screencast here. Obviously, I'm never going to make my secret, just my name and the number one. Uh, but for the time being, that's what it is for this test bed that I'm, I'm working on. Uh, so you see, it actually, when it's setting itself up, it asks back, hey, what's our internal communication you know, key and secret? And so then it can talk to any of the other services that are generated on demand. Um, similar in this approach to the querying aspect, if I click the syllabus page here, um, these are kind of just instructional resources that are pulled from the central system. Uh, so this content doesn't live here. There's no edit button. Uh, what this is doing is, if I go back to the CIS and we look for resources, you can see there's Angel and Electronic Reserves. Um, I actually would have the other kind of internal system resources uh, that we can pull up. And the, the internal system resources, if you will, are things like uh, materials language, right? So 
we want to communicate to students, hey, there's materials. You know, materials you need to take this course, it's actually a legal requirement that you have. Uh, so we have kind of a machine name for it, and this allows for stable communication, right? So this gets created out here. Say, hey, resources, what are the resources I need? That goes and asks the CIS for this language, hey, what resources did they say they need? Um, in the case of the welcome letter, the welcome language you see right now, we just have you know, requests this from the instructor. Um, we actually can do, let's see, what's another resource we have here? We go to content in the CIS, and we have uh, help language. So this is the, the standard help language. And if I click help, you'll see we have the standard help language here. Um, something else it does, I can't you know, kind of spoof at the moment, is that it actually will put the instructor contact information here based on what it finds in the CIS. So it'll pen that to the front. Um, another nice little thing in playing with adding is, uh, this is a project called Table Contents. It actually is dynamically figuring out what the headings are on the page and then adding them here. So if I go back to CIS, let's say that this is not the right resource language. We don't, you know, obviously we use Angel in this, but we don't use electronic reserves. So if I go into courses in CIS and go to about 20 here, we do offerings, we'll edit this section that was made you know, on demand previously. And syllabus. Okay, so let's say the resource to use is just Angel. Part fundamentals is our material. And so we'll save that. If we go back here and refresh this page now. Oh, we're using the default one. So I need to actually do some trickery to find my information to the request. <laughs> it's a problem with being an admin when you attempt to show anything. So there's this section here. That actually is this string in this case, so if we save that, it will then start looking up off of that. There we go. So you'll see it actually now only has Angel because that's that's effectively what the bind is. Is a, when a student account's created, it's populating that automatically. Um, instructors, you know, technologists, people that have a higher level of access, I haven't put this in yet, will have um, sort of a masquerade type of function where they'll just have a drop down to say what section do you want to view as kind of a thing. Uh, so if I go back to welcome letter, so just request that. Syllabus, there wasn't a syllabus that came across. And so you'll see, because I didn't upload a syllabus, it's not going to put anything there. It just says, hey, I know there isn't a syllabus. You need to request this from your instructor. Um, so this way we can stick to some instructional design best practices in terms of information that should be there. Um, but at the same time, allow people the flexibility to you know, use or not use parts of the tool set. So in the next one, we're going to see what happens now that we have this LTI relationship binded. We have this new site in the CIS. Um, how does that work if I go back to it?